Hey guys, insight number five. So we're looking at Joel 2 and 3. Um, well, these two chapters are really just inclusive, that, that love, that whole covenant faithfulness and that covenant abiding love that really does exist. Um, there's a there's talk in there again over in um, 25 or 21 through 25, again about the rain and, and the worms and the plague and that the hard times and that Christ will come and, and restore with rain and, and build it up again. So we covered that already, but there's that. And um, 11 and 12 of chapter 2 is really good, talking about turning to the Lord with all your heart and don't let the Lord be dead to you. Um, you open your heart to him. And I've written in my scriptures, break open your heart to him. Like Don't just like open a little bit. Like Break it open and be like, come in. Please come in and heal and deliver. Because Christ will restore all and will know you will know he is with you. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of people still say to me, like, how do you know he's with you? And again, I will say, what are you looking for? What are your expectations around this? Because I know he's with me. It's not that I can see him. I talk to him all the time, but it's not like he's my imaginary friend either because he answers what I'm talking about in different ways every day. Sometimes it's just quiet strength. Sometimes I'll hear words. Sometimes the thing I'm looking for that I need will just appear immediately. Sometimes I need to go on a longer search and then I find other things I've been looking for. And you could easily call them all coincidence or, you know, luck of the draw or whatever you want to put it down to. And yet I know differently because it's too personal. Now, even just simple things of like seeing sunglasses that I loved, but they were $120 and I don't have $120 for sunglasses. And then like a year later, because I've been living prov providently and, you know, taking care of my finances like we should, or that we, you know, is good for us to do, I'm trying to stop using the word should, um, I found them in an op shop for $5. Now I had $5 for sunglasses. So, yay, thrift store find. Um, that whole thrift store principle. Yeah, I'm so happy. Uh, that was really cool. And they were perfectly good, hardly used, like if used at all. And they were exactly the same ones I've been looking at. So, you know, I don't even say that to anybody. I don't mention it. And you can't, there's too many coincidences to call it a coincidence. It's not. It's, you know, divine direction. Divine intervention, divine design. Yeah, absolutely. So, here Joel promises, prophesies of the second coming of Christ. That's basically what the rest of his book is, is the prophecies of the second coming of Christ. We will have heard of the vast trials evil and icky that will precede the event. I mean, like, we're living in it right now, aren't we? Like, we've heard of the icky that's still going to come, and we're already living in some icky, so, yeah. Uh, verse 11 and 12, who can abide this day? This is verse 11 says, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, and for he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? So who can abide the coming of the Lord? Because if it's that terrible and that great, People aren't going to abide it. They're going to be terrified. They're going to be running. I'm not. I'm looking forward to it. I'm saying bring it on. I'm happy for it. Who can abide this day? Those who have embraced Christ, embraced, embraced Christ and his gospel. That's who's going to abide the day. Because we're not going to be scared of it. Because we're going to know what's happening. And yeah, it's going to be really scary. But we're like, it's okay. It's all going to be over soon. Yay. And we'll be back with Christ and we'll be with it together and there won't be any more pain and suffering and we're all heading for that. That's the plan. So you say, who can abide the day? Some people are going to be absolutely freaked out of their brains. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm scared, but healthy amount of scared because I know there's good things ahead and Christ is soon. So I'm not scared of that. I'm like, we all have to go sometime. It'll just happen. I just want it to be quick and as less painful as possible, right? But I'll take whatever. It'll be all right. The Lord will be with me. I'll get through it. Um, but yeah, again, break open your heart to him. Don't just, like, don't let him be dead to you. Don't let him, don't be Gomer and be like, oh, yeah, I've got that dude somewhere and, you know, but I'm, I'm busy over here. No, break open your heart to him and embrace and let him in. Um, and in verse 23, the imagery again of the rain and the healing it brings. So he will come to nourish and restore. However, gain your testimony before the crash. Now, I was talking to the same group. I was talking to a group yesterday, and, and the leader of the group was the institute course. 
but I do. Um, she was telling us last year about her really hard car accident. And she said like something that was really applicable to this, and I totally agree. And it's, she said that she was in that moment, she couldn't move, she, she was having trouble breathing, she looked over at her husband, who she didn't know at the time had broken his back, and he was struggling to breathe, and she said that was not the moment to gain a testimony. She was glad she already had one. And I was like, ain't that the truth? And I thought that was quite simply profound. And that in those moments of struggle and trial is not the moment to start gaining a testimony. Prepare beforehand to have that spiritual survival, that survival, that relationship with Christ, so that when those hard moments come, you're good. You already know what to do. You've built the framework. You have the relationship with Christ. You're good to go for the hard thing. No matter how hard it is, no matter how icky it is, yes, it's still going to hurt. Yes, it's still going to be a long recovery. But you can do it because you know certain things. You know he's with you. You know how to do it. And you know how to call on help. You know how to access those things from heaven that you need. It's not the moment to start learning how to do that when you're in the middle of the car accident. You do that before the crash. And I thought that was really good. So during the hardest time to cling to your testimony, um, not gain one, right? You should already, well, not chain, trying to lose the word should. It's really good and it's highly recommended to gain one before you're in the hard time. Um, so yeah, gain one today before you need to rely on it. Work on that today before you have to rely on that to get through the hard time. Now, President Iring said, you are being nourished and comforted by a loving saviour who knows how to sucker you in whatever test you face. And that is entirely true, as in that each of our tests that we have, and remember they're not pass-fail tests, it's product development tests. He knows how to like nourish us and help us through each one of those, each little thing that comes up. He specifically designs the daily mercies for us of that day. So it's really, really awesome news and just teachings there. Um, the rest of Joel is quite short. Uh, three, there's only three chapters. Now these are, I should have said two at the beginning, these are called the minor prophets, not because they were less than the others, just simply we have less words for them. So they're like shorter books, that's all. Um, but yeah, verse three talks about making your choice. Like he will help you get through these days, the terrible thing will come, but where will you be in the end? Right? We already know who's going to win. So why are you still picking which team, right? Why are you still thinking about that? You know who's going to win. You know what's going to happen. So stick with that. So there you go. There's my thoughts for this week. I hope that inspired and uplifted you. Like at least one thing. It would be great. But um, hang around for next week. There's Amos and I think something else. I'm not into I haven't looked at it yet. I've been too busy. But I'm going to get there. And it's going to be great. And I'll see you there because we're almost done for this year. And then we're into New Testament. But stay safe. Do come find me. Just do your best at it and just enjoy and immerse yourself in the scriptures and your prayers and build that framework ready for whatever's going to come. All right. Love you guys. See ya.